In the workshop, mounting a copper boiler for the Stuart Models beam engine on a suitable base and making it work. This is part one of two. And here I'm cutting the base to match the original engine's base from a piece of good quality birch plywood. I've changed the blade on my bandsaw for a brand new one. This is really sharp and it cuts very straight. The only trouble I find with these small bandsaws is that once the blade blunts, it wanders all over the place. And even though the blade guide is set too high in this clip, the bandsaw blade still cuts accurately down the pencil line on the piece of wood. And this is birch plywood, so it's very hard stuff and it's quite thick. This birch plywood baseboard has been cut to the same length as the engine's baseboard. And that's so when the boiler is pushed up next to the engine baseboard, it looks like it's part of the same system. But it's much easier for storage. The problem with large steam plants is what do you do with them when you're not playing with them? Because this steam plant is splittable into two main components, the boiler part and the steam engine part, then you can pack them away separately. I need to figure out what's going to go where on this small baseboard that supports the boiler. I have to fit some sort of a burner, and I've found a little ceramic burner that should do the job, and that doesn't take up too much space. The hand pump will need put in somewhere, either at the front of the boiler, or maybe at the back of the boiler. I'm going to need a place to put a small condenser, and at the moment it's looking like it's going to be next to the burner, which is not ideal because it's at the wrong end of the boiler really. More about this later. The bottom of this boiler looks a little bit odd, because it has a silver soldered plate to cover the seam. It's not made from a piece of tube, it's made from a piece of rolled flat copper. The brass strip with the two threaded bosses silver soldered to it is mounted to the boiler using the boiler bands, and it seems to be okay. When I first bought this boiler, it needed a hydraulic test, so I did a video about that. Here's an excerpt from it. This boiler is not made from very heavy gauge copper and I was a bit concerned when I first started pressure testing it, and the idea of doing a video was, if it started to fail, I was going to go all the way and destroy it completely with hydraulic pressure. In the original video I show it being tested to a pressure of about 160 pounds per square inch, but in reality I pumped the pressure up to over 200 pounds per square inch. The boiler successfully passed this test in every way. So after the test, I clad it in mahogany, made a superheated element, and that's how you see it today. This boiler is a marine type center flue water tube boiler. And here are the cross water tubes in the center flue itself. Back now to making the baseboard. I may end up not using this board if it's too small, but we'll see how we go. The first thing to do was to mark out the position where the boiler is going to sit on the board. Then I drilled two 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter holes and counter bore them with a 3 8 diameter drill using the depth stop on the drilling machine. And because I measured the distance between the bushes accurately, the boiler is a firm push fit into the holes on the piece of wood. I'm going to be fastening the boiler to the board using two BA bolts. And as the 3 8 of an inch projections on the bottom of the boiler mounting go down into these holes, that will make a very secure mounting for the boiler, not just relying on the two BA bolts. All the two countersunk two BA bolts do is hold the boiler firmly against the baseboard. Here's the story so far. I've cut the baseboard to match the length of the baseboard on the original beam engine and now I've fastened the boiler to it. When I position the boiler's baseboard with the boiler on it next to the beam engine sat on its baseboard, you can see the principle. I can either keep these as separate components or what I could do is mount both of these baseboards, in which case I would call them plinths, on another baseboard and turn it into one large steam plant. We shall see. And once again, here is a mock-up of the proposed layout. The small gas tank is not going to function as a gas tank. It's only there to show the position of a condenser that I haven't made yet. And now it's time to turn my attention to the dreaded burner problem. And the first attempt is not good. This gas jet is far too big. You can see the yellow flame. No good at all. The gas is going into there too slowly. I changed the jet for a number 8 type and that's perfect. This type of gas burner is designed to plug onto the end of the flue tube, but the flue tube on this boiler is too big for it. So I'm going to use an alternative mounting arrangement. This is an M6 bolt that loosely screws into one of the burner's vent holes. And I'm just using this bolt as a temporary measure to allow me to mark out the position for the burner on the baseboard. So now it's time to remove the boiler 
and make a proper fitting to mount the burner in the right position. In exactly the same way as I did with the boiler mountings, I counterboard the hole using the same depth stop and a 3 8 of an inch drill, because this is a piece of 3 8 of an inch diameter brass bar. And now it's over to the lathe to start the machining operation. The same procedure as normal, face across the front first, then drill it with a centre drill. And for this job I'm using a 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill which is tapping size for 2BA because the bottom part of this that sits into the baseboard needs to be threaded 2BA. And now I'm about to use a 2BA tap to thread the hole. I'm doing this under power just because it's quicker. Whenever I reverse the direction of the lathe to withdraw a tap from a piece of work I always keep my hand on the tailstock chuck. That's to keep the chuck tight on the tap and also to take some of the weight of the tailstock. This clip shows me using some 400 wet or dry sandpaper just to clean up the piece of metal, followed by parting off the component. I always part off brass quite fast because I find it very easy to part off. And this old box with lathe is quite good, it's more than rigid enough and it doesn't chatter. Parting off can be a problem with some lathes, particularly small ones or on lathes where the headstock spindle is either worn or not adjusted correctly. Thankfully I don't have the problem with this boxford, it's old but it's very good. In this clip I've mounted the component that I parted off in the chuck and I'm currently turning down the end of it to a quarter of an inch in diameter. I'm going to thread this quarter by 40 threads per inch and this is going to screw into one of the holes in the side of the burner. Because I'm mounting this burner externally, I don't need any ventilation holes around the outside edge anyway, so losing one of them is not going to be any problem at all. Frequent use of the micrometer allows me to make sure that I get this to be exactly a quarter of an inch in diameter. It's no good at all if you cut the part undersized, it needs to be exactly a quarter of an inch in diameter. And now I can use my tailstock die holder to cut the thread. In this clip I'm just reducing the length of the thread because it was a little bit on the long side. With the component still clamped in the chuck, I just screw the burner onto the end of it. I'm trying not to be heavy handed with this because the threads in the burner are quite shallow. Back over to the baseboard now and I'm using a 2BA countersunk bolt to bolt the assembly in place. And here you see the burner fitted in position. I've bent the gas pipe at 90 degrees to attach a pipe and it's time to test it. At this stage I'm only really interested in how long it takes to raise steam and whether I can raise enough steam so I'm putting a temporary blanking plug in place and now I can fill the boiler to about halfway. As long as the water is above the flue tube that's all I'm concerned with for the moment. Now it's time to light the burner. A very easy process because the burner is outside the boiler and I much prefer these burners to be positioned just about as you see this one because it's good to see the flame and it doesn't smell bad. And even though I'm not in the habit of doing this, I stuck my nose over the chimney to smell the gas. And the good news is there was no smell at all. So unless the carbon monoxide detector goes off, I'll be able to steam this boiler in the workshop without any problems whatsoever. I'm quite impressed with this small gas burner. In no time at all, steam is issuing forth from the hole in the top of the boiler. As I said earlier, this is not a pressure test. All I needed to do was see how long it took to generate the steam, which was no time at all. It's only a small boiler, and it's really possibly a little undersized for a Stuart beam, but it doesn't matter, because you never run Stuart beams really fast. I do when I'm testing them on compressed air, but when you run them normally, they run very, very slowly, and they'll run on just a whiff of steam, so this boiler will be adequate for the job. I'm not sure which end I'm going to put the pump at, probably the one where it looks the best, and I think that's going to be at the front, and also I'll be able to get my hand round the side of it whilst it's in steam to pump some water in. And there's still the small matter of where to put the condenser which I haven't made yet. I'll do that in the concluding episode after this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.